Another day and another brand new road bike. This time the turn of the oldest bike brand in the world, Bianchi, with an all new 2021 model year Specialissimo. Now, as you can probably tell, I don't actually have the bike in my hands yet, but there is one coming my way very soon. But for now, to go through the tech details and give some things I like about the bike and some things I dislike. There's some interesting topics in the bike to cover. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so make sure you get down in the comment section and comment away as you watch the video. If you haven't heard of the Specialissimo before, it was launched back in 2015 and was pitched as a lightweight, climbing focused, but all round capable road and race bike. Uh, super lightweight, very traditional, elegant looking bike with simple round tubes, mostly horizontal top tube, no drop stays, no disc brakes, no integration, no aerodynamics, none of the modern features that we're seeing on road bikes these days. A really beautiful bike. What Italian companies like Bianchi do really well, make bikes look extremely gorgeous. For 2021 then, it's a brand new bike, a ground up redesign, and doesn't really share much with their old bike other than the name and that focus on being as light as possible. Otherwise, it's a radical departure from that previous bike. But we'll do the weight first. And firstly, it's a disc brake only bike. Yes, no rim brakes, disc brakes only I'm afraid, as most new road bikes are. But despite the move to disc brakes, the frame is actually lighter. It gone down from 780 grams of the previous version down to 750 grams, which is very impressive. The fork weight though has gone up from 340 to 370 grams. Those are claim weights for a size 55, by the way, and those weights are definitely in line with top end rivals from Candel, uh, Specialized and so on. Although Specialized ASOS comes in at 585 grams. So beside that, the Specialissimo isn't particularly light. It's, I mean, it's light, 700 to 750 grams. It's very light for a disc brake road friendly days, but it's not as light as it could potentially be and as light as that Specialized ASOS. So if weight matters, probably not the lightest option, but a more to bike than weight, which we'll get into now. So as I mentioned, it's a disc brake only frame, which is a very controversial move perhaps if you dislike disc brakes because lots of people don't like them, but disc brakes are hugely popular in the industry and they're making bikes that sell and people are buying disc brake road bikes. So disc brakes only, but I think more controversial than disc brakes, which are no bad thing in my opinion, is the fact they've given this bike an aero and integration makeover that moves it a long way from that beautiful bike launch in 2015 and has lost some of the beauty in my opinion. So as with most, well not most, but many lightweight road bikes like the Specialized Tarmac, the Candel Super 6 Evo and the Scott Addict, the bikes that were first developed to be as light as possible, they now have been given an aero makeover using the latest understandings of aero without the big weight penalty of those original aero bikes launched some 10 years ago. So we have aero influences from the Ultra, the dedicated aero bike, which you can see in the fork, the head tube around the seat tube. So it should be faster in the wind tunnel, although there's no aero claims in the press pack. So how fast it actually is compared to the Ultra or the original Specialissimo is unknown, but we can assume it can be faster. Hopefully they've done their CFD and wind tunnel testing to back up the looks of this bike. So an aero makeover, that's a big deal. And it's a big departure visually from that original bike. And then there's integration, which is no great surprise because that's a big trend in the road bike market at the moment. Visible cables are a sign of a traditional bike for many people. So we have fully integrated cables in the handlebar, the stem and into the frame. Looks very clean, very modern, and that's clearly what lots of you want based on some of the comments I'm seeing, especially on the giant TCR. And clearly it's a deal breaker for many of you buying a bike this year or next year. Buying a modern road bike has to have invisible cables so that is what Bianchi has managed to do with this new Specialissimo. A few other small changes. There's now an internal seat clamp, as you expect, because most high-end bikes have an invisible internal seat clamp, so that's gone inside the frame. And tyre clearance has improved with this bike because wire tyres are on trend right now. Many people, whether racing or just riding sportives, are riding bigger tyres. But unfortunately, Bianchi has capped it at 28 millimetres, which is not the wires it could have gone to. That specialised ASOS I mentioned earlier, link above if you missed it, will take up to a 32. And most other bikes in this category will take a 30, 32 at a pinch. But personally, I think a missed opportunity not to offer a wire tire 30 or 32. But let me know what you think down below. If 28 wide enough, would you rather have 30, 32 on this sort of bike? One key technology carried over from the original Specialissimo is the countervail technology in the frame. 
So this is a special material they add to the carbon fiber layer. They don't reveal the secrets of it, it's their big USP that helps with dampen vibrations. Sounds like a gimmick, but it does work pretty well. I've ridden quite a few Bianchis over the years with the technology from the Infinito to the Ultra, and it does provide a slightly smooth ride. It's not a game-changing technology, it's not like the ISO Speed or the Future Shock, but it does offer a smoother ride in combination with wired tires at low pressures. Quite a few changes then, uh, modern changes, so integration, aerodynamics, wired tires, disc brake, some good, some bad, depending on your point of view on the different aspects of technology in a modern road bike. But for me, it's a real shame they've lost the beautiful simplicity, the elegance of that original bike launched back in 2015. And it going the way that many road bikes are going, which is a shame really, because it appears to be another aero wannabe. I like the internal cable routing, that looks nice, but there are issues around changing the stem length, handbar width, packing it for going traveling, or your mechanic building the bike up in the first place, or just maintenance, changing the cable and so on, although it does look very clean. But the aero influence on the frame doesn't really work for me, to be honest. I'm sure it'll ride really nice and it'll ride very fast if they've done wind tunnel testing and it's faster than the old bike. And that'll matter for the pros, of course, who'll be riding this bike next year, most likely. With Bianchi having quite a good season this year with Jumbo Visma, but they're switching to the Australian outfit, Green Edge, in 2021. And we see most of the pros using the Ultra, maybe using a specialist mode for some mountain climbs, but we expect to see this bike in the Pro Peloton a lot more next year unless they have a new Ultra out, which must be overdue for an update soon. But it definitely gives the pros uh, another suitable bike, a very capable bike that's aero and lightweight. But for non-racing cyclists like you and I, it's definitely another bike to add to that kind of ASOS, uh, Pali, sort of high-end carbon that is really lightweight. It has to focus on ride quality, nice difference to weight ratio. But for me, they've lost the, the looks of the original and it doesn't look as pretty. It still looks nice, but I don't think it's quite the Bianchi I'd expect in 2021. I feel like in chasing the aero and the integration um, game, they've lost some of that distinctiveness about the original bike. But time will tell, I guess. And it's probably down to you. What do you think of the bike? Would you buy the bike? That's the ultimate test for the bike. If it sells in good numbers, then it's been a success. And if it wins the Tour de France perhaps next year, then even greater success for the bike. But for me, I do like the old bike. But time to hand it over to you. What do you think of a new bike? Let me know down below. Uh, before I go, there's no prices, which is weird. Normally when a brand launches a new bike, they announce a range of prices, but there's no prices yet. I guess they're coming soon. Maybe they're just working out currency conversions. But we know there'll be a range of builds. So Shimano Durace Di2, SRAM Red E-Tap, Campag, Super Record, and going down to Mechanical Ultegra, and there'll also be different frame colors. So of course, the famous iconic Celeste, the color the brand is best known for, that'd be available. There'll be an all black, which is apparently 80 gram lighter, because paint can impact the frame weight. So some colors are lighter, and black is apparently lighter in this case. Um, and some other colors available, and some signature custom colors that are painted by hand in Italy, if you want to go bespoke and get a nice custom painted frame. So yeah, prices haven't been released yet, but expect it to be fairly pricey, up in line with the original Specialist MO. So at a guess, five grand starting price for Ultegra Mechanical, up to 10, 11 grand, you know, you name, you name price, it's gonna be up there. Anyway, that's all for now. Just a quick news story on this new bike. Hopefully get one to test very soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you don't wanna miss that. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.